My name is Samantha with OnTheClock.com and today we're going to go over job and project costing. If you do have any questions, feel free to answer to ask them in the chat box and I will answer them at the end of the presentation. I'm going to say hello in there so that you know where it's at. So right now I'm logged into my account as the administrator and you can handle job and project costing setup as a manager and an administrator. So to set up job and project costing, you're going to go to settings and then you'll get your drop down. You are going to go ahead and navigate to job and project costing setup. So on your screen, you're going to have three buckets. You're going to have customers, projects, and tasks. You can either enter these all in separately. What that means is if I enter a customer here and then a project here and then a task here, that they're not related to one another. So if I make a customer se selection here and then I have a project that's not nested underneath, that just means they're not related. So anytime that I go to make a selection, I'm going to see a customer, a project, and a task listed separately from one another. So under customers, you are able to nest your settings together. So basically, I have two customers in here. I have Samantha's Singing School and Big Bird Company. If I hit this arrow, it expands it down to a sub project. That just means that when somebody makes the selection Samantha's Singing School, they're going to see music compilation underneath that. Then if I go ahead and hit this arrow, I get subtasks. These are related to this project. So when they select this project, they're going to see song one, song two, and song three related to it. So this is just a setup of how the employees are going to see these when they select them. Now, if I had something outside of this nested group over here in projects, that just means that if they did select Samantha's singing school, they would see music compilation plus this project over here. And you might have things that are not related to each other. Say that you have certain customers that you do work with, but then there's just tasks that people would do in general throughout the day that aren't necessarily part of the customer, you might have those tasks over here for somebody to just select from as something that they're doing throughout the day. So once you get your customers and your projects and your tasks all entered in, you actually want to turn this on for your employees so that they can make that selection. So you're going to go to employees and you're just going to select your employee. You're going to come to general. And it's right in this general setting that you're going to scroll down and you're going to see job and project costing. So we're interested in turning on customer selection, project selection, and task selection. I have a couple choices here. I could either leave it off, which means that they're not going to be making that choice. On would mean that they can make this choice, but they don't have to. On and required just means that I am saying that you must make this selection in order to move forward with punching in and out for the day. So once you have that set up, you're going to go ahead and hit save settings and that's going to update so that your employee is now set up to make those selections. And then we're going to go ahead and log in as an employee. So I have my employee here. I'm going to go ahead and log in. So you'll see this is the employee screen. I'm on the punch site as an employee. I've logged in. You see this red banner. It's telling me that I have to make a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a selection. Notice how only the selections and tasks that I put here are showing up. And then just so that you can see that again, I'm going to go ahead and switch my company. Notice how the selections change to match the company. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit punch in and they should land on a success. Once my employees punched in and out, I have my time cards. Once I have some time card data, I've already pre-filled in some data for us so that we can see what the report would look like. Once your employees have punched in and out for a span of time and you want to run your job and project costing report, you're actually gonna come to time cards. And then over in these gold buttons, you're gonna go ahead and click more. And you're gonna come to job and project costing reports. So you have a couple options in here. You have report filters, dates, that's just a custom date range that you wanna enter in. Period's gonna be your pay period. So this is just based off of your pay period type. We're gonna go ahead and find our pay period in here. 
and you want this one. You could filter by a manager. And then you can select a specific employee if you want to, or you can see all. Um, over on the side here on the right, you have your totaling options. And you can actually change these. You can rearrange these. So you can actually drag and drop these into place. So I'm going to do by entry date, by employee. And then once I'm ready to see these, I'm just going to put a check in these boxes. And then you'll notice that as I put these checks in the boxes, the report begins to come alive here. So now I have my report down here. And you can see that I've got it breaking down by the dates in my employee, what they've selected. And we can see the breakout of hours. So song one, two hours, song two, six and a half hours, song three, 7.58 hours. And then so on. Employee two was with Big Bird Company, Bird Photography, Blue Jay, six and a half hours. And it just breaks the report out like that. If you do have any breaks going on, so this is an auto break right here, we do list that as well. And then it kind of gives us this grand total down here. It says 38.58. And actually with this information, we can do an export to Excel. And that's just going to give us a nice little Excel export of this information. And you can do whatever you need to do with this. And that is the basics of how you would run a report with job and project costing. If you had to delete out companies, like this is no longer relevant, we're done with this project, we're done with this task, you can actually open up these fields. You can make something inactive by hitting the red X. So now when I do my drop down, that's no longer there. It's not going to be a choice for my employee anymore. It's going to be completely gone. And then you can always show your inactives as well. And then you could always reactivate that if you needed to. You would just go ahead and hit save. Hi, Holly. So Holly asked, if you select on required for customers and projects out of town, will they be able to punch in when in the yard uh, project and test? So it depends. It depends on what your security setting is, Holly. If they were set up to where they had a location on there, so if you had a location restriction and this was true and the employee had a restriction in their security settings that said to disable the punch, if they weren't within that geofence that you marked for that project, they would not be able to punch in for that project. If you went in and removed that and you wanted them to be able to punch in for that project, you could actually remove the location barriers and then they would be able to select that project. Otherwise, no. Can you delete many jobs at once? So in settings with job and project costing setup, you would have to kind of go through one at a time and then you could reactivate them. So you could do them, you'd have to actually hit them one at a time. You couldn't just like mass delete all at once. So you would have to come in and actually hit the red X. Are there any other questions about job and project costing setup? One other thing about job and project costing setup, uh, cause it does come up quite often. You will see just three slots at first. So you'll, you'll come in and you'll enter something in here. When you hit save, we'll actually populate more for you to enter and see how more appear. The geo punch is set up for all jobs or each job. So the geo fence, if you do, it's just a okay location for anyone to punch in at. So it's not, it's not assigned to a specific job or task or customer or anything like that. Are there any other questions about job and project costs I could answer? If there are no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the webinar. If you do have questions, you can always ask them on the replay video and that'll send a little bit after this is over and those questions will come over to support and we will answer those as soon as possible. So that concludes the webinar. Thank you for joining.